Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. <laughs> God bless you. Today I am reading from the New Jerusalem Bible, and we are in um, First Maccabees. And I stopped yesterday, and I labeled it um, Chapter 4, 2. But really, now I'm looking at it closer, I could see we actually stopped at verse 35 in chapter 4. But I was just going by the titles to each section. And so I'm just going to continue doing that. And... Well, I don't know. I just heard something sounded very weird, like a roaring, like a plane was too close to the house. Okay, well, we're good. And um, here we're going to start with the purification and the dedication of the temple. Judas and his brothers then said, Now that our enemies have been defeated, let us go up to purify the sanctuary and dedicate it. So they marshaled the whole army and went up to Mount Zion. There they found the sanctuary deserted, the altar desecrated, the gates burnt down, and vegetation growing in the courts as it might be in a wood or on some mountain, while the storerooms were in ruins. They tore their garments and mourned bitterly, putting dust on their heads. They prostrated themselves on the ground and when the trumpets gave the signal, they cried aloud to heaven. Judas then ordered his men to keep the citadel garrison engaged until he had purified the sanctuary. Next, he selected priests who were blameless and zealous for the law to purify the sanctuary and remove the stones of the pollution to some unclean place. They discussed what should be done about the altar of burnt offerings, which had been profaned, and very properly decided to pull it down, rather than be embarrassed about it since it had been defiled by the Gentiles. They therefore demolished it and deposited the stones in a suitable place on the hill of the dwelling to await the appearance of a prophet who should give a ruling about them. They took unhewn stones, as the law prescribed, and built a new altar on the lines of the old one. They restored the holy place and the interior of the dwelling and purified the courts. They made new sacred vessels and brought the lampstand, the altar of incense, and the table into the temple. They burned incense on the altar and lit the lamps on the lampstand and these shone inside the temple. They placed the loaves on the table and hung the curtains and completed all the task they had undertaken. On the 25th of the ninth month, Shelev, in the year 148, they rose at dawn and offered a lawful sacrifice on the new altar of burnt offerings which they had made. The altar was dedicated to the sound of hymns, zithers, lyres, and cymbals at the same time of year and on the same day on which the Gentiles had originally profaned it. The whole people fell prostrate, prostrate in an adoration and then praised heaven who had granted them success. For eight days they celebrated the dedication of the altar, joyfully offering burnt offerings, communion and thanksgiving sacrifices. They ornamented the front of the temple with crowns and bosses of gold, renovated the gates and storerooms, providing the latter with doors. There was no end to the rejoicing among the people since the, the the disgrace inflicted by the Gentiles had been effaced. Judas with his brothers and the whole assembly of Israel 
made it a law that the days of the dedication of the altar should be celebrated yearly at the proper season. For eight days, beginning on the 25th of the month, she left with rejoicing and gladness. Then they proceeded to build high walls with strong towers round Mount Zion to prevent the Gentiles from coming and riding roughshod over it as, as it had as in the past. Judas stationed a garrison there to guard it. He also fortified Beth Zor, so the people would have a fort fortress confronting Idumea. It it the expedit oh this is chapter five. Um, the expedition against the Idumeans and Ammonites. When the surrounding nations heard that the altar had been rebuilt and the sanctuary restored to what it had been before, they became very angry and decided to destroy the descendants of Jacob living among them. They began to murder and evict our people. Judas made war on the sons of Esau and Idumea in the region of the Ac Acrobatine, where they were besieging the Israelites. He dealt them a serious blow, drove them off, and despoiled them. He also remembered the wickedness of the sons of Bain, who were a menace and a trap for the people with their ambushes on the roads. Having blockaded them in their town and besieged them, he put them under the curse of destruction. He then set fire to their towers and burned them down with everyone inside. Next, he crossed over to the Ammonites, where he found a strong fighting force and a numerous people commanded by Timotheus. He fought many battles with them, defeated them and cut them to pieces. Having captured Jazer and its dependent villages, he retired to Judea. Preliminaries to Campaigns in Galilee and Gilead Next, the Gentiles of Gilead banded together to destroy the Israelites living in their territory. The latter, however, took refuge in the fortress of Dathahema. Dathema? D-A-T-H-E-M-A. And sent the following letters to Judas and his brothers. The Gentiles round us have banded themselves together against us to destroy us and they are preparing to storm the fortress in which we have taken refuge. Timotheus is in command of their forces. Come at once and rescue us from their clutches, for we have already suffered great losses. All our countrymen living in Tobias country have been killed. Their women and children have been taken into captivity. Their property has been seized and about a thousand men have been destroyed there. While the letter was being read, other messengers arrived from Galilee with their garments torn, bearing similar news. The people of Ptolemais, Tyre, and Sidon have joined forces with the whole of Gentile Galilee to destroy us. When Judas and the people heard this, they held a great assembly to decide what should be done for their oppressed countrymen who were under attack from their enemies. Judas said to his brother Simeon, Pick your men and go and relieve your countrymen in Galilee, while my brother Jonathan and I make our way into Gilead. He left Joseph, son of Zechariah, and the people's leader, Azariah with the remainder of the army in Judea to keep guard and gave them these orders. You are to be responsible for our people. Do not engage the Gentiles until we return. Simon was allotted there 3,000 men for the expedition into Galilee and Judah, Judas 8,000 for Gilead. The expeditions in Galilee and Gilead. 
Simon advanced into Galilee, engaged the Gentiles in several battles, and swept all before him. He pursued them to the gate of Ptolemais, and they lost about 3,000 men whose spoils they, he collected. With him, he took away the Jews of Galilee and Ar Arbatus, Bata, with their wives and children and all their possessions, and brought them into Judea with great rejoicing. Meanwhile, Judas Maccabeus and his brother Jonathan crossed the Jordan and made a three days march through the desert where they encountered the Nabataeans who gave them a friendly reception and told them everything that had been happening to their brothers in Gilead, many of whom they said were shut up in Basra and Bosar, Alamea, Ala, Alama, um, Chasphos, Mate and Carnaim, all large fortified towns. Others were blockaded in the towns, other towns of Gilead, and enemy planned to attack and capture these strongholds the very next day and destroy all the people inside them on one day. Judas and his army at once turned by the desert road to Basra. He took the town and having put all the males to the sword and collected the booty, burned it down. When night came, he left the place and they continued their march until they reached the fortress. In the light of the dawn, they looked and there was an innumerable horde setting up ladders and engines to capture the fortress the assault was just beginning. When Judas saw that the attack had begun and that the war cry was rising to heaven from the city, mingled with trumpet calls and a great clamor, he said to the men of his army, into battle today for your brothers. Dividing them into three, three commands, he advanced on the enemy's rear with trumpets sounding and prayers shouted aloud. The troops of Timotheus, recognizing that this was Maccabeus, fled before his advance. Maccabeus dealt them a crushing defeat. About 8,000 of their men fell that day. Then, wheeling on Alamea, he attacked and captured it, and having killed all the males and collected the booty, burned the place down. From there he moved on and took Chasfo, Mate, Bosar, and the remaining towns of Gilead. After these events, Timotheus mustered another force and pitched camp opposite Raphion on the far side of the stream bed. Judas sent men to reconnaissance the camp, and these reported back as follows. With him are massed all the Gentiles surrounding us. Making, us a, making a very numerous army with Arab mercenaries as auxiliaries. They are encamped on the far side of the stream bed and ready to launch an attack on you. Judas then advanced to engage them and was approaching the water course with his troops when Timotheus told the commanders of his army, if he crosses first, we shall not be able to resist him because he will have a great advantage over us. But if he is afraid and camps on the other side of the stream, we shall cross over to him and the advantage will be ours. As soon as Judas reached the water course, he posted people scribes along it, giving them this order. Do not let anyone pitch his tent. All are, oh. <coughs> excuse me. So, Judas reached the water course. He posted people's scribes along it, giving them this order. Do not let anyone pitch his tent. All are to go into battle. He was himself the first to cross to the enemy's side, with all the people following. He defeated all the opposing Gentiles, who threw down their arms and ran for refuge in the sanctuary of Carmenin. 
the Jews first captured the town and then burned down the temple with everyone inside. And so Karnamia was overthrown and the enemy could offer no further resistance to Judas. Next, Judas assembled all the Israelites living in Gilead, from the least to the greatest, with their wives, children, and belongings, an enormous muster, to take them to Judea. They reached Ephraim, and a large town straddling the road and strongly fortified, as it was impossible to pass by it either to right or to left. There was nothing but for to march straight through. But the people of the town denied them passage and barricaded the gates with stones. Judah sent him a conciliatory message in these terms. We want to pass through your territory to reach our own. No one will do you any harm. We only want to go through on foot. But they would not open up for him. So Judas sent an order down the column for everyone to halt where he stood. The fighting men took up their positions. Judas attacked the, attacked the town all day and night, and the town fell to him. He put all the males to the sword, raised the town to the ground, plundered it, and marched through the town square over the bodies of the dead. They then crossed the Jordan into the Great Plain, opposite Beth Sheen. Judas all the time rallying the stragglers and encouraging the people the whole way until they reached Judea. They climbed Mount Zion in joy and gladness and presented burnt offerings because they had returned safe and sound without having lost a single man. Boy, I tell you, if I ever go to war, I'd certainly want a guy like Judas Maccabeus. <laughs> and as always, I love you.